Hi everybody, welcome to Airbrush Artistry. This is Douglas Hartman, and today I'd like to talk about my next project. Uh, in the past video, I talked about doing uh, like a Strahd von Zarovich because I'm running the the Curse of Strahd campaign, and uh, and I thought about it, and it's been a while since I've done anything on any kind of illustration board or uh, paper substrate, for lack of a better term. Um, this is actually one of the last pieces that I've, that I've done on, on, this is illustration board, Strathmore illustration board. It was done in 2016 and I thought I might need, uh, a little more practice, so to say, before I, I did straw himself. So, um, but one of the things I like to talk about before we go into what my next project is going to be, um, in previous video, I talked about creating shapes and forms through value changes. And this is a perfect example um, to talk, actually help talk, talk more in detail about that. Um, I did this with FW Acrylic Artist Inc. And I used my H&S Evolution with a uh, 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle setup. And it performed flawlessly. Uh, this any kind of highlights, the specular highlights, these here, all of these in here, uh, on the edges of the rose petals, and his teeth, the bridge of the nose, and the ocular bones here, all that was used created by um, just using a Exacto blade, an Exacto knife blade and scraping through the ink into the paper itself. I didn't use any kind of um, erasing techniques, and um, but it was all formed, um, as you can tell, just from creating the different value changes, um, you're able to create form and shapes um, by putting the underneath here, his horn, instead of bringing this the darker value all the way down to the bottom um, using a a um, reflected light source it helps give the illusion that this subject matter right here is round in shape um, by placing the highlights on top because the light source is coming down it helps give that illusion um, same thing with the ocular bones here the reason why these highlights are here is because this portion of the skull is closer to us and away from the rest of this area behind it. Therefore, it's, it's catching the light source on top. Same thing with this highlight here on the bottom of the ocular bone right here. It's further away and closer to us than the eye socket is, therefore it's going to be lighter, and the edge of it right here is going to catch the light source. The area below it doesn't have any highlights on it because it is further back and below this not catching the light source, so it's going to be, the value of it is going to be a little bit darker. Same thing with the, the nose region. The nose socket is within so it's darker the bridge of the nose bone right here is going to be lighter because again it's catching that light source this shape right here is further in therefore farther away from us than the surrounding area the surrounding shapes therefore it's going to be darker same thing with the, you know the teeth are kind of shoddy I'm not really too proud of them but they they are closer to us, they come off of the base plane of the skull, therefore they're further um, away, closer to us and for, uh, more in direct source of the light source than this, these shapes right here. Therefore they're going to have, they're going to be lighter and they're going to have highlights on them. Uh, another thing to think about when you're doing a piece is, is you have to also think about the value of the of this 
the subject that you're you're painting at the time, the area that you're painting, its value in relationship to the value of objects around it. Okay. Like I wouldn't have all this here is going to be darker than this up in here. Okay. It's going to be lighter than this area right in here because it's further in and not catching as much light. Now, uh, same thing like even like in this area of the, the bridge of the skull. It's going to be lighter right in here where it's going to be in more direct contact with a light source. And then as it rounds down, this is going to be a little bit darker. Um, same thing with the, the bottom edge of this, this bone right here. It's going to be darker in here because the light source is coming from above. Okay. Just something to think about and to help you create more realistic artwork. And so the next thing I'm going to do, keep it a little less serious. <laughs> I'm going to do a goblin, okay, um, just to kind of get back into the swing of things. I'm using uh, Arches watercolor paper, hot pressed, it's 140 pound. Um, and this is how I, I well, it's, I do my t-shirts the same way. I do a grid system. Um, I did a one inch grid system on the, uh, the reference I used. I put a, a one inch grid system on the paper. Uh, and all it, it, it just ensures that everything is in the right place. <laughs> There's nothing worse than doing a portrait and you know you, you draw the portrait on there before you paint it. You go and you start painting and your eye, you know, one of the eyes is like a half inch off or, or, or an inch off or something like that. Um, not enough to make it look like it was done on purpose, but just enough to let everybody else know that you screwed up, right, and made a mistake. And if you're going to make a mistake, Make a big mistake. Therefore, it looks like it was done on purpose. <laughs> but what I'm doing, I'm not finished yet. And I hope you can see. I used a, a H pencil, very lightly, just did the outlines, roughly put in where some of the where the shadows are, and I had to finish his ears and his forehead and hair. And then the next step, what I'll do is I'll go in with an eraser and get rid of all the grid lines, okay? And one thing to think about, if you're going to be doing a, uh, a character piece, which is, uh, this is, it's a monster, but um, just like when we're creating our, our character for Dungeons and & Dragons and we get into the backstory, okay? It helps to um, get into the backstory of the creature that you're going to create. All right. And so I know it's just a goblin. All right. But you think about when you think about, OK, um, is he, you know, is he going to have is he going to have any bling? <laughs> you know, um, is he from a, a tribe or a clan that lives relatively close to a traveled road and they conduct raiding parties? And, and uh, um, you know, they collect treasure and stuff from overtaking people and, and whatnot. And they adorn themselves with whatever they are able to, to scrounge and scavenge. Um, or is he in, in, which a lot of goblins happen to be, uh, as we know in D&D, a lot of goblins are in servitude to, like, bugbears and orcs. If that's the case, you know, he's not going to have any nose rings or earrings or piercings or any type of, you know, clothing, uh, you know, if he's in servitude to bugbears, he's going to be a little bit beat up, you know, and that's one of the things I was thinking about. I was thinking about actually taking out one of his eyes and, um, because, you know, bugbears like to use morning stars, you know, which is essentially just a spiked club. Well, one of those bugbears may have, you know, just for, for fun, clocked this guy in the head and one of the spikes took out his eye, you know. So I may do that. I may take out his eye and just put a socket in there. Um, I may I give him uh, more scarring. Um, he's going to be really thin and uh, from being underfed, you know, because he's just going to be 
barely getting any scraps of food from the bugbears, you know. Um, you may have, you know, some bruising and stuff like that. And, and, and it helps, you know, to create the character that you're going to paint. Um, and it, it just gives them a little bit more, um, it makes it, it's just, it's just fun, you know, um, it helps, you know, so he's not going to have any bling. He's not going to have, you know, trust me, I wouldn't mind, you know, giving him a nose ring. Why not? Right. You've got a big, a big old bone through the, well, if he had a big old bone through his nose, that's just something for the bugbears to grab a hold and rip out. So you wouldn't do that. <laughs> you wouldn't have that, you know, um, so I'm looking forward to um, uh, doing this guy, and and it's going to be uh, instead of doing a long video uh, working out, I'm going to do it in sections. Um, I know sometimes it's it's hard to sit through a video, a longer video, but but uh, um, I'll do it in sections and um, explain my techniques as I create you know certain areas and whatnot. But like I said, this is the te technique I use to make sure everything is in the proper place. It's really easy. Just to create a grid system. You do it on your, your artwork and then you transfer it over onto a paper. You're able to, you know, f fill in the lines and everything. And it's easy also to, if you want to upsize um, the piece on, on the, the, uh, your art, you know, the artboard or whatnot, um, if I want to make, if I had a bigger, you know, piece of paper, I put one inch squares on my, uh, my reference photo. I could put two inch squares on the paper and it would, you know, essentially just double the size of, you know, my artwork. I do that a lot when I'm doing a t-shirt. Um, I'll print off the, uh, the image, uh, reference photo or whatever on, uh, letterhead and I'll put one inch squares a grid on the um, on the letterhead, and I'll put two inch squares on the T-shirt. If I'm doing like a large or an extra large T-shirt, um, that way it doubles the size of the artwork, and it fills out you know the um, whatever I'm airbrushing on the T-shirt or whatnot. But anyway, um, let me get back to uh, to drawing this guy out. And next up is color selection. So before I even start painting, I'm going to go through and pick out and make up uh, my flesh tones. Um, and it's another thing to think, and that's why I love fantasy artwork, is, you know, everybody thinks goblins, green goblins, you know. Um, goblins are green. Well, you know, I <laughs> if I wanted to make a hot pink goblin, it'd be perfectly okay. All right, because it's a fantastical creature, <laughs> and uh, um, though I'm not going to do that with this guy, um, I'll probably stick with more earthy, uh, raw and burnt umbers. Uh, probably um, add a little bit of uh, moss green to it to kind of tone it down a little bit, and dirty it up, and uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye.